Okay, we're going to continue with looking at the breadboard and actually measuring current flow in this series circuit. Now from prior videos, I've explained how we install the resistors into each quadrant to actually make a series circuit. We have a series path of the resistors. Now we need to take a look on the meter and record the values and we're going to do an Ohm's Law calculation to determine what the current flow would be based on the resistance in this particular circuit. So on the first resistor, R1, we have a value of 219.7 ohms. On the second resistor, R2, we have a value of 99.5 ohms. On the third resistor, R3, we have 220 ohms. Now there's a small variation, again, depending on the manufacturer of the resistor. If we recheck them, you'll probably see that on occasion the resistor may be of a different or slight value change. Now this one being R1, we'll check it again, and we have 219.7. If I check it again, we have 219.8. If we check it again, 219.7. So depending on the connection on your meter and the leads. Now the other thing if you notice, as I'm testing, I'm keeping my fingers on what's called the thumb guards to prevent my fingers becoming part of the load. We don't want to add additional resistance we want to measure the actual resistance of each resistor in the series circuit. So one of the characteristics uh, of a series circuit is that the sum of each individual resistor will total circuit resistance. So we've gone ahead and we've measured all the values and recorded them. So through formula, R1 plus R2 plus R3 will equal our total circuit resistance. So when I go from one end of the circuit to the next end of the circuit and read the value, we calculate out to 538.6 ohms for total circuit resistance as per formula. Okay, now taking a look at the meter to make sure we're in the, in the correct jack orientation, we were on the ohm scale for checking resistance. And we're going to check down here to make sure we're in the right position for checking voltage. As you can see, on here we can check volts, ohms, RPMs, and diodes, as well as a thermal test when we're checking for temperature with a probe. But in this particular case, we are going to measure voltage, so we have the red lead in the jack for voltage, and the negative lead in the common jack. So what we need to do is change the position to actually move to the voltage scale. So now we can check voltage on the meter. So, as you can see on the meter here that we can read volts DC and the scale that we can use. So we're going to take a look at the amount of source voltage we have. So the source voltage is 12.96 volts. Okay, now that we have the meter set for checking the available voltage and we've recorded that voltage, we're going to take the leads from our power pack and we're going to make the connection from one end of the circuit to the other end of the circuit. Now we can go back with our meter leads and we can check voltage drops across each resistor. I can check R1 I can check R2 and I can check R3. The total each resistor drops will equal the source voltage. So we have a voltage drop across R1, we have a voltage drop across R2, and we have a voltage drop across R3 the total voltage that drops will always equal source voltage. So the next thing we're going to do is, because now we know what the total circuit resistance is, 
we know what the source voltage is, we are going to apply an Ohm's law calculation through formula, and I, which is intensity of current flow, or amperage, equals E over R. E is electromotive force, which is voltage, and R is the resistance in the circuit. We've calculated circuit resistance. We know what source voltage is, so we apply the formula I equals E over R to give us our calculated current flow in this circuit. So we've actually measured now the, uh, the voltage that we're using for source voltage in this circuit. We've calculated voltage drops, which equals source voltage. And now we need to de determine through a calculation of Ohm's law what current is actually flowing in the circuit. And I want to th show through application that one of the characteristics of a series circuit is that the current flow is the same throughout the entire circuit. So through formula, we are going to use I, which is intensity of current flow, which equals E over R. E is our electromotive force, which is the voltage that we're going to be using for source voltage in this particular circuit. R is the resistance total that we've already calculated through formula for the overall circuit resistance. So again, the formula we're going to use is I equals E over R. We plug in the values and we should be able to calculate out what the current flow would be. So we've recorded that our source voltage is 12.96 volts. We know what our resistance total is. R1 is 219, roughly 220 ohms. R2 is 100 ohms, or 99.68 ohms. And R3 is 219.9, again, which is close to 220 ohms. So as a total, when we add them all up, we end up with 538 ohms. So now what we need to do is apply the formula I equals E over R. R. So the source voltage is 12.96 volts divided by the resistance total of 538 ohms, which should equal our current flow when we do the math. And our current flow that we've calculated out through the formula should equal 0 0.023 amps. So we'll take a look at this practically and see if the math tells the truth in the application. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to check the current flow in application on this series breadboard. So we need to put the jacks in the correct position and adjust the, the dial on the meter to the correct point we can check the current flow in this particular circuit. So we're going to leave the common jack and then we're going to move the positive jack over to the milliamp scale. Then we need to rotate the scale. The meter now is telling me that I'm not on the right scale for measuring current flow. So I'm going to adjust the meter to the correct position. The meter stops beeping to tell me that I'm in the right jack position and I can go ahead and check my value. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to break this circuit to include the amp meter. We have the amp meter set correctly on the right jack position. And now we need to include the amp meter in series. You always connect a amp meter in series and always connect a voltmeter parallel to the loads. So I'm going to break this circuit and I'm going to connect one end to my jack going to my meter and then the other end back to the circuit. So how the current's going to flow now is from the power source into the meter out of the meter, back into the circuit, through the circuit, and back to the source. So on the meter, we should be reading our current flow, which is 0 0.023 amps. Okay, from prior video segments, I talked about when we use our power pack, that sometimes over a period of time when the power pack's connected to the circuit, in a breadboard application, the voltage changes slightly because of the transformer. It warms up, cools down, there's inconsistencies on the manufacturer of the particular power packs, but the value that we came up with was 0.025 amps. 
The value we calculated out was 0 0.023 amps. Based on ch doing the breadboard work and some mathematical calculations, we want to be very close to those values. And again, I've taken decimal places off on the resistance value. But the point is here, on this particular circuit, and that characteristic is that we always are going to have the equal amount of current flow through the entire circuit no matter where we test it. Now, I broke the front portion of the circuit apart and included our meter in series, giving us our value. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the area of the position we're going to put the meter in. So I'm just going to remove one resistor and I'm going to break the circuit and I'm just going to stick it in another quadrant away from this one so I actually can hook my meter up. So I'm going to take my power supply now and reconnect it to the front of the circuit and as you can see the current flow and the power can only flow to this point. The circuit is open from here and then through the rest of the resistance if it was connected. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my meter leads and I'm going to connect them in pair or pardon me in series to the circuit. And if we take a look at the value that's on the meter, then we could see that we should have 0 0.025 amps of current flow. Now I'm going to reconnect the circuit in the same bus position. So now the, the circuit is complete again. Now I'm going to open up this portion of the circuit and I'm going to take my amp meter and connect it in series again. So the power is actually going to flow from the positive through this resistor, through that bus connection, through this resistor, and stop. Then it would flow from here back to the power source. So in order to read the current flow, I need to hook my meter leads up and allow the power to flow through here, through the meter, through the, the scale on the meter, and then back to the circuit completing the path. So I make our connection here and here, now looking at the meter and getting 0 0.025 amps of current flow. Now, if I reconnect again so that our circuit is complete one more time, and now I'm going to break this end of the circuit, and then I'm going to connect it to the meter lead, and then reconnect again to the circuit. So the power is going to flow through the resistors in series, through the meter in series and come back to the power supply and again checking on the meter our value is 0 0.0238 amps. So if we take a look at that again the variation has changed slightly because of the time of doing this particular task. The point here is no matter where we check current flow in a series circuit it's always going to be the same.